Hello, everyone, and welcome to Book Break for Greece Public Library. I am Kirstra. I'm a librarian here. I moderate the Pints and Prose Book Discussion Group, and I am joined, as always, by my fellow reader and colleague, Claire. Hello, everyone. I'm Claire, and I moderate the historical fiction on Facebook and also are as the page turns. So. Awesome. So today, I feel like we haven't done this in a really long time, but today we're just going to round up some non-themed books we've been reading. Right. And I've been on a tear, so hopefully. Have you? Oh, boy. Yeah. All right. Well, mm -hmm. do you want to get us started? Oh, sure. Why not? I'll just jump right into it. The yeah. first was actually one from my list from what I was looking forward to. Mm -hmm. See, I broke down and bought the silly thing. <laughs> called The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins, and it is a Jane Eyre retelling, um, but it's now set in Birmingham, Alabama, in a kind of a foo-foo neighborhood, you know. Um, Jane is a dog walker to the rich and, and famous in her neighborhood, and Jane is also lying about herself, so... Hmm. She is a thief who helps herself to some of the goodies around the houses, um, She's a former foster child that is running from a bad situation. And there's a lot of build up to that. And finally you find out exactly what that is. So Jane is a character with a lot of secrets, okay? Um, and then enter Eddie Rochester. Eddie Rochester is the Thornfield Estates, charming, handsome young widower. Um, his wife and her best friend have recently passed away so they say, in a, a boating accident. Um, we don't know a whole lot about Eddie's past. He's kind of an enigma as well. Um, he buys a dog so Jane can enter his life and they quickly develop a very serious relationship. But is either one of them really who they say they are? Um, the last character that's the main character in the novel is V, who is Eddie ex-wife. I mean, not ex-wife, his <laughs> wife who's recently passed. Um, she is a self-made millionaire, um, a founder of a company called Southern Merchants or something. All I kept thinking is Draper James. It's like, <laughs> well, you know, it's describing the little fruit-shaped bowls and the, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh lord. Um, here I sit with my gingham mask. Um, but she's also not who she seems. Um, so you're, you're finding a lot of backstory and back and forth in between these three characters. And there's chapters from Jane's viewpoint and then later on from, from B's. Hmm. Um, so although I would not call this deep, I'm not really sure it did justice to Jane Eyre. Uh, but if you're in the mood for kind of a good trashy um, entertaining thriller, then by all means, pick up The Wife Upstairs. It was a very, very quick read. Mm, so maybe like a thriller with literary pretensions? That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> so to say, because it seems like there's a fair amount. So it's always tough with like retellings of classics or um, myths and things like, what do you change? What do you keep to mm -hmm. update it? And it seems like there's a fair amount that really got changed between Jane Eyre and this one. The way I'll put it is none of these characters are particularly likable. Mm. If all of them ended up in the bottom of a lake, I really wouldn't have been too sad. So there you have awesome. it. Yeah. All right. I kind of felt the same way about Gone Girl. Like, I hate these people. Let them all. Mm. That kind of a similar vibe for me. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, I actually have two books that are Southern. Um, Look I was at like, let go. me do my Southern book. And then I was like, wait, I have two. So I'm just going to pick one. Um, so my first book is going to be The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, um, which I uh, listened to on Libby, I think. Um, it was one of those, it was available. I was like, oh, let's see what this is about. I've been hearing a bunch of stuff about this book. Let's see whether the hype holds up. Um, and I <laughs> really liked it. Um, so the setup is, um, it takes place in the late 90s in, um, in Charleston, uh, South Carolina. Um, 
and Patty is our main character. She is a mother. Her husband is a doctor. He's a surgeon. Um, she has two kids um, and she's got sort of the typical suburban stay at home mom life, um, except her father's mother is, um, is getting on in years. She's got some dementia, so she lives with them. So Patty is taking care of everyone. Um, her husband works long hours, her kids are teens, and she's got her slightly crazy mother-in-law living in the apartment over the garage, right? Oh, um, <laughs> right. So she's got, you know, this full life and she doesn't have a lot of friends. Um, and she has um, a rather disastrous attempt at joining a book club, um, at which point um, she and a few of the other folks who um, also decide not to join the original one, decide to create their own book club. Um, and it is a book club that reads true crime. Um, oh my gosh. Which is hysterical. So um, like their first book is an Anne Rule book and they talk about it and they, you know. Um, so it's these four Southern ladies. Um, I think they're all stay-at-home moms who meet and, you know, discuss pulpy true crime books as their like social network. Um, so they have this, um, this group and they become very tight friends. And then a stranger comes to town who ends up possibly being up to no good. Um, and, you know, things take off from there. Um, but what I really liked about this book is it gets into, um, a lot of class and race politics of the sort of um, upper middle class suburban existence, um, which I feel like you don't always get a lot of that struggle in books about, you know, upper middle class suburban ladies. Um, and there's a lot just about um, tough interpersonal relationships. Um, and I thought all of the characters were very well drawn and well developed. Um, there is, you know, it is the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. So there is a little bit of um, supernatural business in there, um, but it is not like a pulpy vampire mm -hmm. thriller book. Um, there's There's a lot more to it than that. I ended up being surprised by how kind of meaty the book was. So um, I really enjoyed it, even if you would say like vampires are not your thing. <laughs> um, I would still encourage you to pick up this book. Um, I, I really liked it. Yeah, it sounds like something I would really like, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you would, actually. Yeah. So, all right, on to my <laughs> next one. What is my next one? Oh, this one was really interesting. This was something totally different for me. Um, I think I've mentioned that my daughter and I are kind of doing a joint, you know, book of the mm -hmm. month club and then talking about the book. And this is one of the ones she encouraged me to read and we read together. It's called The Office of Historical Correction by Danielle Evans. And it is a novella and then some stories. Um, Danielle Evans, if you're also doing a reading challenge, hey, 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 this can go into two categories that essays or short stories and also author of color. So, um, nice. and that's one thing I found really interesting is sometimes it's nice to get a book that kind of like pushes you out of your mm -hmm. comfort zone a bit. And I felt like this book did that with me. And I would also be interested in reading more that she wrote. Um, it's kind of an x-ray insight into characters um, hmm. in a way that allows them to speak about race and culture and history um, and just get you thinking. Um, so one of the two that really stood out to me, I'm not going to go through every single story in the book, but um, I forget which one it was called now, but it's a story about, you'll know it as soon as you start it, a white college student who is dating a boy who it's very casual in Florida and he buys her a swimsuit, which is Confederate flag swimsuit, and takes a picture of it and puts it on his Facebook page while this picture goes viral. And mm. this is not who she was, so to speak, mm -hmm. but she becomes something in this picture 
So it's kind of the story when she goes back to college, what happens? Like the girl across the hall from her is black, how she interprets it. There are people from like right to speak groups that are pounding on her door, trying to get her to stand up for some, I mean, and just, you know, she was disciplined by the universe. It, how her world went from A to B with the viral picture mm -hmm. and what ensued. Very interesting. Um, hmm. The other one was actually the novella and it was called the Office of Historical Corrections. Um, I would have loved to have seen this as a book. I got very engrossed with these characters. I would have liked to have seen more about them. And just the whole idea of having a kind of federal office that goes around placing little stickers telling you what's wrong with the history of certain things just hmm. totally fascinated me. I was like, is there really one of these? <laughs> you know. Um, but anyway, this is a story about a woman and she she's in the office she takes it seriously you kind of learn about her best friend from childhood how things went wrong with him how she finally circled back and also joined the office of historical corrections and then was shunned because of a major historical hoo-ha-ha -ha that happened mm -hmm. um so now she is being sent to i believe michigan and it's a to confirm or not confirm whether a, a racial um, lynching took place. Hmm. So, and you find out things about the family and it, it was just, man, by the end, I was, you're just on the edge of your seat trying mm -hmm. to figure out what's gonna happen because it affects the present day people very much so. Um, so yeah, I, I was very surprised at that. I read it pretty quickly um, just because I was so interested and all of these different characters, but particularly that last one. Um, mm -hmm. Like Danielle, I would have liked to have heard more. Nice. No. Very cool. No, that yeah. sounds really interesting. I'm not um, not usually one for short stories. Me I tend to pass those by, but that sounds really interesting. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, my next book is my nonfiction for this month. Um, it is Know My Name by Chanel Miller. Um, so this is a memoir written by, um, so Chanel was Emily Doe or the victim in the Stanford rape case. So this was the case with Brock Turner, the swimmer at Stanford. Um, she was assaulted um, essentially during a blackout um, and the book covers um, the assault and like the entire aftermath and trial um, all the way up to the point where she wrote the book. Um, and it's, it's tough, but it's really good. And the author um, is an excellent writer. It's a very honest book. And really she's grappling with um, both the trauma of the assault and then the trauma and like the re-trauma of the entire trial process, um, which ends up being far more than she ever expected it to be. Um, and her sort of um, very gradual process of kind of reclaiming that whole narrative and her life and becoming an advocate for herself and others. Um, so, you may or may not remember her um, victim statement at the sentencing uh, was published on BuzzFeed and went like super mega viral. Um, and this whole time she was, um, she was anonymous. Um, I think maybe right up until the, the sentencing. So I think it was published under Emily Doe, um, but it was not too long after that, that she started to sort of allow herself to be reconciled with that um, with that Emily Doe persona. Um, so again, it's just, if nothing else, it's an amazingly honest, um, reckoning with how you process a trauma like that. Um, and she's a very gifted writer, um, and a super interesting person. And it's definitely, definitely well worth a read. Yeah. Definitely a tough topic. There was, it, I, I just, I'd be, it was just unbelievable how that whole thing went down. Mm -hmm. and so, yeah. Yeah, agreed. All right, the next one, also out of my comfort zone, 
other book of the month club that my daughter and I mm. um, outlawed. I believe it was also a Reese Witherspoon pick. So okay. you can check that box people too, um, if you're doing a challenge. <laughs> but this one, it starts out with such a great first line. I love this first line. In the year of our Lord, 1894, I became an outlaw. Like, nice. You know, I'm thinking true grit. I'm thinking mm -hmm. you know, Western. And it was, but it wasn't. Um, hmm. Ada is 17 years old. Um, it is 1894. There's been a terrible flu pandemic that has wiped out a good part of the population. There's a very fervent evangelism happening uh, with baby Jesus. Um, and women are pretty much prized only for their reproductive mm -hmm. rights. Um, if you are not successful, which, you know, as we all know, many people may, may or may not, um, like within a year after she's been married, at 17, mind you, um, she has not become pregnant. Her mother is a midwife. She's, you know, pretty respected in the community. They're getting panicky because uh, women are hung as witches, um, blamed for medical ailments that go wrong. So it's kind of an odd mix of dystopian with the old Western kind of thing. Um, so in kind of knowing that her arrest is going to be imminent, her mother encourages her to leave her family, all she has known. Um, she is thrown out of her husband's house as being unsuccessful. Um, so she goes to first to a convent. Um, at the convent, she starts recopying books and becomes very interested, you know, with her background as assisting her mom, the midwife. Um, she's very interested in medical things. She, she really wants to know why she was barren. Um, what happens? How can you fix people? Because she knows that many of the things attributed to women that, you know, can't bear children are not true. Um, so she starts copying medical books, finds somebody she wants to follow, goes to the mother superior who ends up sending her to a band of outlaws called the whole hole in the wall gang um, because she feels she's not a good fit for the convent, obviously, um, but hopes she can find safety and a direction in another life. So this is where it all starts to get truly bizarre uh, because the hole in the wall gang like typically Billy the kid, like there are no, mm -hmm. like, gen like I don't know what gender the kid was. Um, and there's a lot of, like my daughter and I were saying, can she have brought in any more themes of sexuality? Because you just want the whole full gamut, mm -hmm. you know? And, and it just got to be a bit much for me. Like the whole story, it was like, I was having trouble finding, finding what, you know, what to follow. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, fertility, racism, mental illness, homophobia, it's all there people. It is all there <laughs> in the pages of this less than 300 page book. Wow. So for me, that kind of took something from it. Mm -hmm. Other people like on Goodreads felt differently. Like some loved that there were diverse characters. And although I love that there were diverse characters, I wish I kind of knew more what was happening because I mm -hmm. felt at times I had to go back and try to figured out and the reveals came at different times. It just kind of made it awkward for me and seeing the kids eventual struggle with mental illness and different things. Like I was trying to figure out is it bipolar, uh, you know, mm -hmm. it just, uh, it got to be almost a distraction for me. So got it. there you have it. If you do read it, I'd be real curious to know what you thought. Um, mm -hmm. Interesting. Oh. Yeah. Nice. I think I'm going to have a Western to talk about next time. So that'll be interesting. I've been, there have been a lot of Westerns out recently, I think, kind of non traditional yeah. Westerns. So interesting. This one, this one definitely fits the non traditional. <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah. Sounds like it. Um, okay. My last book. Um, is another one that I very much enjoyed. It is Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark. Um, and this one I used for the reading challenge, um, read a book set in the 1920s or the 1820s. This one is set in the 1920s. Um, and it is, so we have it classed in science fiction. Um, I don't know that I'd go quite 
that far. It's a little more uh, magical realism. So mm-hmm. the basic premise is we're in uh, Macon, Georgia in the early 20s. Um, and um, so this is the time for those who don't know when the, the Ku Klux Klan really sort of had a big resurgence. Um, and the premise is that um, some of the Ku Klux Klan members are actual literal monsters under the Robin Hood. Um, so the, the characters call them uh, Ku Kluxes to kind of distinguish them from the rest of sort of the clan who is not great, but at least human. <laughs> So um, our main character is Maurice Boudreau. Um, she has sort of a, a gang of um, resistance fighters who are all out to kind of um, take down this menace of these literal Ku Klux monsters who are terrorizing the population. Um, and it, it sort of goes from there, but it incorporates um, a lot of... Um, uh, like uh, slave culture mythology. Um, so there is a Gullah grandmother who brings her sort of superstitions. There are ancestors who play a part. Um, and there are references to like um, night doctors, which is a, a slave sort of, uh, they're mythological characters um, from slave culture. So it's a little book and it packs a lot in there, um, but it really is, um, it is funny and dark and weird, um, but super interesting and a heck of a ride. It just bangs out of the gate and it does not slow down until you get to the end. Um, so high, high recommend for Ring Shout. Good. Yeah. I've seen that one on some lists. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm you sure could. I love the cover. I recognized it. So. Yeah, you could also use it for author of color, um, historical fiction not set during World War II. Um, let's see. And I'm not sure if it's an award winner or not, but it did make it onto a lot of lists from last year. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so that's all I've got. Cool. Um, So just a reminder, everyone, there is absolutely still tons of time to register for the Expand Your Reading Horizons Challenge. You can do that right on our website, or you can do it at the information desk if you come into the library. Um, But again, just a, you know, just a few suggestions to help you expand your horizons, just nudge you a little bit out of your comfort zone um, to read something new for the new year. Awesome. Well, thank you all. Uh, We will be back in, I believe, two weeks. um, And we will see you then. Happy reading. Take care. Bye.